Okay. So for the second part of 5.3, Hess's law. Hess's law is actually really, really important. Um, so again, a quick reminder, a positive delta H is endothermic. This is going to cost us energy. So in this chart, you're going to see up arrows for any endothermic process. It costs us energy to do that action, to make that change. And negative delta H is exothermic. On this chart, you're going to see a down arrow. We're going to get energy back or enthalpy back. We're going to get energy back. That's how this is going to work. So Hess's law basically says, hey, if a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, the individual steps can be summed together to give us the overall. So Hess's law is always just kind of this diagram basically saying, look, my reactants to my products, my initial to my final state are equivalent to the sum of the steps that I take. And it's a beautiful thing, basically, that we can, what we can actually do as chemists is we can figure out the energy of each of these different parts and we can find out if a reaction is worth doing. It's it's actually really helpful when we're trying to decide, hey, can we actually do this? Will it cost us too much energy? Will we get energy back? Like what are the pitfalls? So if this is where I start with propane, okay? So C3, H8, and five oxygens. Well, we always decompose things whenever we're determining the overall energy. We're always say, all right, well, let's just turn it into its individual elements. So I've got three graphites to represent the three carbons. I've got, because hydrogen comes as hydrogen gas. I have four hydrogen molecules. There are two hydrogens each for the total of eight hydrogens. And I've got the five oxygens. Oxygen is already in its elemental state. So we take our, all the reactants and we put them into their elemental state. Okay. Then from that, we take the individual parts. So I'm going to combine my carbons and my oxygens to form the three CO2s that I need for my product. And then I'm going to take the four waters and the remaining oxygens to make four water molecules. And that's what we end up to, I guess, this here to make four water molecules. Okay. So cost me energy to break propane into its elements of carbon and hydrogen. I get energy back by forming bonds. By the way, we can also say that as well. Uh, it costs energy to break bonds. So turning it into an element is going to cost this energy. And gain energy or we release energy to form bonds. So again, I break it into its parts, cost me energy, hence the energy goes up. I take those parts, or I guess to say these parts, and I form CO2. That gives me energy back. Then I do it again with the remaining hydrogen and oxygen to form four water molecules that gives me energy in return. So this is where I started. This is where I ended. The overall delta between those is that gap. So the, this reaction ultimately releases, it costs us some energy, but we get a ton back. We end up with a, a delta H of negative 220, uh, 2220 uh, enthalpy. So we get a big energy return for this. So the delta H of uh, delta H for this reaction, and we typically write it afterwards, is negative 2220 two, uh, kilojoules per mole, but kilojoules works because it can work for any of these. Yeah. So that's the idea for delta H of formation. Okay. So uh, a 50 milliliter sample of, so we're mixing some chemicals together. Assume the density hasn't changed. Um, we have a change in temperature. What is the delta H for this mixing reaction? So let's take a look at this. This is kind of a little bit out of place, but it's worth doing. It's a specific heat type problem. Um, so using the reactions below, find the delta H. Okay, so these are the types of problems where look, I wanna make this new compound, okay? So I have, I wanna make carbon monoxide. All right. So I want to figure out, hey, all right, 
So we have these things called delta H of DHF. This is a enthalpy of formation. What is the cost for me to make a chemical from its components parts, right? So here I've got carbon in its elemental state and I've got oxygen gas in its elemental state and I'm making CO2 and experimentally, you have to do this experimentally, we determine that that's the energy of CO2. So that's what it costs me, or that's what I get back in this case to make CO2. So right there is my CO2, the cost of gaining or losing energy in order to get CO2. This is an enthalpy of formation. Every single element, or I'm sorry, every single uh, compound and element, true, every single compound is going to have its own enthalpy of formation. Well, it turns out we can take these values and we can find, we can combine them with other known reactions to get new reactions. So this looks like, hey, what's the enthalpy of formation for carbon monoxide? And so when we're doing these problems and I give you a handful or anybody gives you a handful of reactions, we're going to take these things one at a time. My goal is to go through and to say, hey, where's my carbon solid? Where's my water and my oxygen? Where's my CO? And I'm just going to make sure they're in the right spots and in the right numbers. So I'm going to combine, I'm going to decide what to do to these reactions in order to get these things in their right spots. So just bear with me here on this. So let's start. Let's start with, I have one mole of carbon solid. So if you look at those two reactions, can we find carbon solid? There it is. It's in reaction one. Is it in the right quantity? Yes, I have one mole here and I have one mole here. I don't need to do anything to reaction one. So if I don't change reaction one, this is all set. I don't have to worry about that. I will probably get the answer that I'm looking for. Of course, if you're doing this in a more research type or a different environment other than like a classroom, it's a more complex than this, but the idea still holds. Next up, let's make sure that I have oxygen in the right spot. So where do I have oxygen? Well, I have oxygen here. I also have oxygen here. When you have a chemical or an element or something that you need in your final reaction, let's just assume that it'll work itself out. We can deal with that later. So I've got oxygen gas in both of these. So I'm gonna ignore this for now because we'll just see what happens. We're gonna, we're gonna deal with this one later. So for now, we're just gonna do a little question mark. We're gonna check back on this one. Next up, I have carbon monoxide. Let's find carbon monoxide. There's my carbon monoxide. Um, I've got one mole of it here. I need one mole of it. Where do I need it to be though? Because here it's a reactant, here it's a product. So I actually want it to be on the other side. That means that I need to reverse the direction of this reaction. So, so far the reaction one is good. I don't have to make any changes to that one, but I do need to reverse the direction of this one. So let me rewrite this. So reaction one, carbon solid plus O2 gas yields CO2 gas. My delta H of this is negative 394 uh, kilojoules per mole, okay? And I need to reverse reaction two. So reverse two, if I reverse the direction of two, I now have CO2 as the reactant and I have CO gas plus half an oxygen. It's okay to half, have a half. Delta H is equal to, okay. So written here, it's negative, but since I've reversed it, I need to switch the sign. So I now have a positive 283 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I just switch the direction, you switch the sign. And now let's try to add it up and see if we get, it looks like we have the CO now in the right spot. Let's just combine them together. So I'm gonna rewrite everything that I have. Okay, so everything on the left, I've got carbon solid, I've got O2 gas, and I have CO2 gas. And I think that's taking care of everything. Okay, so there's my new set of reactants. I'll write everything on the product side, CO2 gas plus CO, uh, CO gas, okay? CO gas plus half 
and O2 gas. We're going to deal with the delta H's in a second. Um, yeah, we're going to deal with the delta H's in just a moment. Uh, all right, so looking at these two things, it looks like, <clears throat> um, is there anything that appears on both sides? Well, it looks like I have CO2 gas, CO2 gas, that can be eliminated. I have half an oxygen here, and I can eliminate all but half an oxygen here. Okay, so what I have left, I'm going to highlight. I still have the carbon solid. I have half an oxygen, and that's it. And I just have the CO gas left over here. So rewriting it, I have carbon solid plus half an O2 gas yields CO gas. My delta H is just me adding those two numbers together. So my delta H for this reaction is negative 111 kilojoules. So that's what we got, okay? That's it. That's how we do these things. Essentially, you're just trying, oh yeah, let's check back and make sure um, I have half an oxygen. I have half an oxygen. This thing checks out now. We're good. So always just kind of set up the reaction so you have all of the parts of the final thing that you're looking for and then deal with adding those together later. Again, we just combine together the newly calculated began because this switched signs. This became, went from negative to positive. So we want that there. Good. All right. So how about this one? Why don't you guys give this one a go? See if you can determine what the new delta H is for this one. We'll take a look at this. Uh, we'll take a look at this one together in class. All right. How about this one? A little bit more complex, but worth doing. Again, check yourself versus those. It should not be all that difficult. Um, again, same kind of process, walking through all those individual steps, and that's what you should end up with. Okay. Standard enthalpies of formation. So we kind of chatted about these already, but let's talk about them uh, a little bit, a little bit more. So enthalpy, standard enthalpy of formation, the standard enthalpy of formation of this. So this is kind of an important thing. You don't ever need to know the most stable form of an element. Uh, it's always going to be zero. So oxygen gas, for example, is always going to be zero for those, for those chemicals. Okay. All right. Let me just pause this for a moment. So what is the equation for the delta H of formation of C3H8? Okay, so what is the delta H of formation? Okay, so I need, and this is actually relatively simple in terms of making the delta H of formation because if we write down the equation, I need three carbons and I need eight hydrogens. Well, carbon comes as solid in the graphite form. So that right there, is going to be zero kilojoules of energy. Turns out in its elemental state, it is zero kilojoules of energy. Um, and then to that, I need to add a, I need a total of eight hydrogens. Well, hydrogen comes as H2. That's zero kilojoules of energy. And I need eight of them. So I'm going to put a four out front. So, and that will make C3H8 as a gas. And that's what we end up with. So it turns out that if we actually, so in order to come up with a delta H of formation, we actually would take graphite and we would take hydrogen. We would combine it together and see that experimentally, it comes out to 103 point, negative 103.8 kilojoules of energy, which makes sense because we're forming a bunch of bonds. That's how much we would end up with. That's the energy that we would get back from this. So the standard enthalpies of formation is, Anything in its elemental state, carbon, zero, cal, uh, zero kilojoules. Hydrogen in its elemental state, zero kilojoules. This value right here, this has got to be experimental. There's no way to get this, or, or it has to be through other enthalpy terms, but this is experimental. Okay. You don't need to know, uh, you should know a handful of what they are as an element. So most metals are just by themselves. So sodium, magnesium, all those things are just metal solids. Um, oxygen, like oxygen gas is O2. 
Uh, so you kind of get used to these as you're going. If you look through an enthalpy table, and I would encourage you to do it, anything that is marked zero kilojoules, that's going to be the elemental state of that given element. So that's kind of what we're looking at. We don't really use these much in terms of like doing an equation like this. We do use it doing something like this. So what we can actually do is I can go back to that same enthalpy table. And instead of saying, all right, well, what are all the, you know, how much energy do we have? We're going to use this equation right here. So it turns out the total energy change of a reaction. So the delta H of reaction is always equivalent to the summation of products minus the summation of reactants. So let's just focus in on this for just a moment. So first of all, summation just is simply a sum of all products in this case. So a summation of this thing here, the delta H of formation of my moles times their delta H of formation from the from the table, okay? So I'm gonna take moles times delta H to get, and then sum up all of the parts. So we're gonna do an example and it should make sense. And then we do reactants. So it's always gonna be products minus reactants. And that should give us the right delta H because ultimately what we're doing is for the products, we're forming bonds. And for reactants, we're breaking bonds. We're breaking these bonds. It's costing us energy, hence the, uh, hence the sign, okay? So with this, if we take a look, we're going to create a little table. So here is my, uh, here's my reaction. In order to get the summation of all of this, I'm going to need the moles of each of these and the delta HF values of each of these. The moles is going to come from the equation itself. One mole of this... This is just the coefficients, five moles of this, two moles of CO2, four moles of water in the liquid state. Now I'm gonna go to my table to find these. So these are found in a table or an appendix, kind of depending, okay? So we're gonna go and we're gonna find these in a table. So my delta H of formation, we find out the delta H of formation of uh, C3H8. By the way, I'll do one mole of, I'm going to put units for the first one. The units are the same for the rest. Uh, uh, so for C3H8, if I look this up in the appendix, I find out that it is negative 103.8 kilojoules per mole. Per mole. Okay. If I look up O2, you should know this one. It's zero, right? It should be zero because it's in its elemental state. So you're often, sometimes you will not be given a value and you got to say, oh yeah, that's an element. I got to just assign that as zero. Uh, CO2 gas is negative 393.51. And water in the liquid state, state matters, state matters, state matters, negative 285.83. So there's my water. Okay, so reactants on the left, products on the right, let's do this summation. So my delta H of formation, or really what I should say is delta H of reaction is equal to the all of the products, min or products minus reactants. So I'm gonna do these one at a time. Two moles of CO2 times negative 393.51 kilojoules per mole. And so I'm gonna do the, the units once, okay? So moles cancel and the unit left behind should be kilojoules. So this is for CO2. The other thing, I'm also gonna have liquid water that I'm gonna need to take into account. So. Uh, to whatever I have, that whatever value I have for CO2, I'm going to add four times negative 285.83. So that is the total of all of the products. Again, moles times the formation, moles times the formation, moles times the formation, and then just add it all up. So that is my reactants, 
or products, sorry, products minus the reactants. Yeah, so all of this right here, these are products. Now I'm gonna do reactants. So one mole times negative 103.8 kilojoules per mole, moles cancel, uh, plus add the sum, that's the summation part, five times zero, so zero. Uh, so here is my C3H8. Here is my O2, which is, and this is reactants. There we go. That's it. So if we do the math for this, okay. Um, oh, I think I messed that up too. Sorry. Yeah, I just noticed that. This should be three out front there. I think that was, so that's going to be three. My fault. I know because it should end up as the same thing that we have above. Um, so we do the delta H of reaction for this. If I add the two parts up, I end up with negative two, 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 one kilojoules. This is a rounding thing, right? Two, 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 zero is what we saw on the table, I believe. So that's what we end up with. Um, yeah, so that was just a mess up on my part. My part, that should be three. That's it. So how we do the delta H of reaction is we just look at an appendix and we just add up all the parts. And there we go. We've got the delta H of formation. Um, how about this? So use an appendix, look these up and figure out what you get. Okay. And with that said, we can do something like this. If we know the delta H of a reaction, hey, can we determine the delta H of formation of something else? So here we know the whole reaction energy. But can we find out the N2O2? Like, can we figure out a new value for this? So sometimes we can use these to figure out individual L, uh, a delta H of formation. So worth giving this a go as well. And so that moves us on to bond enthalpies. So bond enthalpies are a little bit, a little bit harder to do. Uh, and this is going to require us to kind of understand breaking and forming bonds. And breaking and forming bonds, it's its gonna be a similar kind of setup here. Um, so the total amount of energy, so we can look at it in individual costs, like, hey, this product or this, uh, you know, C3H8 cost me this much, making CO2 cost me this much. Um, we can actually look at it in terms of actual breaking and forming of chemical bonds. And so with that, uh, Let's just take a look at this last part. We're going to be able to do Lewis structures after uh, in, a, in a chapter. So for now, I'm going to draw out the structures and we're going to talk about breaking and forming bonds and everything. So ultimately, if I want to have a bond enthalpy reaction, it's going to cost me energy to sever. If I have this reaction and I want to have these two things apart, I need to sever that react that bond between the two of them it's going to cost me energy to break that bond if i want to have those things separate so that is what we would call the bond energy or the energy it costs that bond is going to give you back or that's going to cost and so with that the delta h is i don't really care about this okay let's ignore this because it's uh, bonds broken versus bonds formed. It doesn't really equate well to the equation we just did, and I don't want to confuse anyone. So what I want to say is this. Breaking bonds costs energy. So every bond you break is going to be a positive. It's an endothermic value. It costs you energy to break a bond. Every formed bonds are a negative energy value. You get that much energy back when you form that bond, okay? So we're just gonna simply say, okay, if I break a bond, it costs us, it gets positive. So the breaking bond, we're gonna break all the bonds and it's gonna be positive. We're gonna form all the bonds, those are gonna be negative. And then we're gonna kind of combine those two sides. We're gonna add those two sides together, okay? We have these bond enthalpy tables. You're not gonna have to memorize this. You would always be provided this. So these are the energies associated for an average bond. These are kind of very, they're not random, but there's a lot of variation in these. This is the average of a single bond. 
And then we have a bunch of energies associated with multiple bonds as well. And so what we are essentially going to do is we're going to come back to this table and we are going to sum all of the changes that we see. So for this reaction right here, the one that we have been doing this whole time, I'm going to draw out the chemical. Okay. So C3 and each of these hydrogens, I'm going to put, I'm going to fill each of these with four bonds. You should not be able to do this. There's my one C3 H8. Okay. All single bonds. Oxygen turns out is double bond and there are five of them. So I'm going to draw out all five of these. Okay. And then we have our division. I have two CO2s. CO2 is actually a carbon with a double bond O on both sides. And there's two of them. And I've got four water molecules. So one, two, three, four. So there are my four. So those are all of the molecules that are reacting. Again, I want to point out that um, breaking bonds versus forming bonds. I'll take this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna break all of these bonds. And then I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna form them over here. So all of the ones on the left, I'm gonna break every single one of these. So I'm just gonna count the totals and then I'm gonna go figure out the math, okay? So we know that this side is gonna be positive. It's gonna cost me energy to do this. So I've got, let's just look at the types of bonds that I have. I've got, first of all, I've got a single carbon hydrogen bond. How many do I have? Well, and I'm gonna show you me breaking them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have broken eight carbon hydrogen bonds. Do we have any other bonds on here? Well, it looks like we have a carbon we have a carbon carbon single bond there. So we also have to tabulate all of the carbon carbon single bonds that I have. One, two carbon carbon. There's only two bonds between the two, not three, there's two. Okay, that's easy. So I can total those up. Uh, how about the oxygen? So let's move over here. Well, it looks like we have oxygen, oxygen, and we've got a double bond. So we have oxygen, oxygen, double bond. We can do that, OO. I'm breaking one, two, three, four, five of those. So I'm gonna break five oxygen, oxygen, double bond. So I'm gonna go back to the table above, eight times whatever the value of a carbon hydrogen single bond is. I'm gonna take two times whatever the value of a carbon, carbon single bond is and five times whatever the value of an oxygen double bond oxygen bond is. And so let's go above and look, carbon hydrogen bond. So carbon, oh, do hydrogen. So hydrogen with carbon. Uh, so there we go. So together 416 for a carbon hydrogen single bond. So I'm gonna put in 416 for my carbon hydrogen single bond there. So 416 times eight uh, together, that's three, three, uh, two, eight kilojoules of energy. Okay, so that takes care of my carbon hydrogen single bond. So next up, I am looking at carbon carbon double bond. So let's go back up. So I gotta go to my multiple bonds table. Um, carbon carbon double bond is gonna be 598. So 598 is what I'm plugging in. So 598, oh, sorry, that goes here, 598 kilojoules of energy uh, times two. Uh, oh, I am so sorry. I think I, I looked at a double bond. I should not have been looking at that. My fault. Don't have a problem admitting a mistake. Carbon, carbon, single bond. So let me back up. I'm sure you caught me and you were screaming at the screen. Here we go, let's do it, uh, let's take a look. So I want carbon, carbon, single bond, carbon, carbon, the single bond is 356, better. 
So 356 there. 356 times two gives me 712 kilojoules from breaking. It's going to cost me that much energy for those two. Now I can move to the uh, O2 or oxygen. And notice that we've got a couple. This is in oxygen, O2, that double bond is 498. So we can total that 498 times five. That's a lot of energy. 498, uh, 2490 kilojoules. Now I'm going to add up all the parts and I end up with 6,530 kilojoules. That's going to break every single bond. And that's going to be positive. That's the cost of, of breaking every single bond. Okay. But we also are going to take that energy. And again, as long as we have Hess's law, as long as we do individual steps, as long as we do this, we're going to be good. And we're going to form a bunch of bonds. We're going to get a bunch of energy returned on this. So what do you want to break? Well, it looks like we have a carbon-oxygen double bond. Let's count those. So carbon double bond oxygen, let's figure out how many we have. One, two, three, four. So each of those has two, so four carbon-oxygen double bonds. So four times whatever carbon double bond O is. I got to give myself a little more space. There we go. Um, okay, so that'll take care of that. Uh, wait, let's just find it now. Carbogen, carbon oxygen double bond. Okay, so we've got a couple CO as in CO2 and CO as in, okay, so we're going to take the one from CO2. And again, there's a bunch of different ones here and it's not perfect. And so that's 803 for the C, 803, four times 803 gives me 4818. Okay, so that's the total energy it would, I would get back from forming those bonds, okay? Uh, what's next? Uh, what else do we have? So it looks like we have a hydrogen-oxygen single bond, hydrogen-oxygen single bond. Let's determine how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got a bunch of them. I've got eight carbon hydrogen single bonds. So eight times oxygen hydrogen single bonds, oxygen hydrogen. So again, hydrogen with oxygen, 467 is what we're gonna get back from that. So 467, 467, which gives me 3736, 3736 add all of that together and I have 8,554 kilojoules of energy. But remember, this one is negative because I get that returned. Now I'm just gonna add those two values together, right? So we're gonna sum those up and you end up with my total delta H of the reaction, 2,024 kilojoules. Pretty, actually pretty decently off because it should be 2,220, two, uh, two but hey, not bad considering it's all from a bunch of different states. So that's how we do that. We're going to learn how to draw Lewis structures. And once we know how to draw the structures, you're going to be able to do that better. But I wanted to introduce all of this in the same kind of thing. So there are a bunch of different ways to get enthalpies. Oh, actually there is. Uh, I do have one written here. So what is the energy associated with this? Okay, so give this one a go. Uh, try this out and see what energies you can have or see what the total enthalpy change for this reaction is. Uh, and yeah, and we might, maybe we'll look at this one as well as the delta H of formation. So with that said, that should do it. Um, yeah, that's the end of the chapter.